It's Shabbos. So he's Parsha. Parsha has been Kate's. We learn in here, this Parsha, that Yosef's dream comes true. His dream that all his brothers, his father, his mother will bow down to him comes true. It comes to fruition. Yosef becomes the second highest power in Egypt, owning below Pharaoh. And the only way people know that Pharaoh is the true ruler is because he sits on the throne and Yosef doesn't. It says, it happened at the end of two years to the day. Pharaoh was dreaming. It's in verse 41. Sorry, chapter 41, verse 1. It says, Pharaoh's dream led to Joseph's, led to, led to Joseph's release from prison. The Midrash states that Joseph's imprisonment, Joseph's imprisonment was extended by two years because he asked, he asked for help from the chamberman of the cupbearers to remember him to Pharaoh. He was interceding in God's plan for him. We learn from this that according to the Talmud, which says in the Pesachim 64b, that although we should pray for divine help, one should not re rely on miracles. So it is there appropriate for Yosef to take action on to bring about his liberation. The words, the words of the Midrash, which is cited earlier, are cited as being contradictory. The Midrash praises Joseph for his trust in God, while also criticizing him for listing the help of the chamberlain of the cupbearers. I'll read a story to you that I read in Rabbi Tversky's commentary on the Chumash. Um, it, is, it is related that one Friday morning that Ba Shem Tov knocked on someone's door and promptly left. When the person answered the door, there was no one there. The only person in sight was walking down the street. He hurried after the Ba Shem Tov and asked him, Were you the one who knocked on my door? Yes, the Ba Shem Tov answered. Was it you that want, what was it that you wanted? And why did you leave? The man asked. The Baal Shem Tov said, I have no provisions for Shabbos, and I am certain that God will provide for me. The Torah says, God will bless you in all that you do. Deuteronomy 15 18. Which means that a person must do some action to draw down the divine blessing. However, that does not mean that this, this specific action one does is a vehicle by whereby God will provide for him. I had to do some action, so I knocked at your door. But you may not be the one whom, through whom God wishes to provide for me. That is why I left. Joseph was both right and wrong, according to the Midrash, asking for help. While we must look to God for advice, for guidance, we cannot hope for a miracle. We must take some action on our behalf in order to make something come alive. In 41, 3 to 4, it says, Then behold, seven other cows emerged after them out of the river of ugly appearance and gaunt flesh. And they stood next to the healthy cows on the bank of the river. The cows of the ugly appearance and gaunt flesh ate the seven cows of beautiful appearance. It's part of the Pharaoh's dream. You learn from this is that evil and not triumph over good on at a distance. 
evil must be next to you in order for it to triumph over you. If you keep evil next to you, you will lose your battle. You will not defeat it. You must keep evil far away from you. That's the only way to defeat evil, to keep it far away. We also learned that later on that these seven cows, it's 14 cows actually, seven good, seven ugly ones, symbolize seven years of plenty for the, fruit, for the grain and the fruit, and seven years of famine. It says in 41, 25, 28, Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is a single one. What God is about to do, he has told to Pharaoh. The seven good cows, they are seven years of prosperity. There shall be seven years of famine and seven years of goodness. It is this matter that I have spoken to Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he has shown to Pharaoh. Two different words there. It changes. It says, He has told to Pharaoh. And then it says at the end of it, He has shown to Pharaoh. Why the change in words, in the verbs? Rabbi Tversky brings down that our great Torah scholars knew how to study Torah. Pesachim 33b says that person should avoid being the bearer of bad tidings. It's signed a verse, he who speaks evil is a fool. Pesachim 10.18 However, sometimes we have to be the bearer of bad news. And in this case, the Talmud says we should avoid the per shocking the person and preferably give him the clue from which he can gather the truth which you may then confirm to him. So this is by Rabbi Shlomo Kluger. It says that this is the teaching that's conveyed by a chain of verbs from being told to being shown. He's giving a hint into the future. He's been telling him that you would have seven years of good. Okay, it's not shocking, it's not bad news, it's good news. Seven years of prosperity in your land. Shown. It's a hint. God's showing him a hint of what will happen. What will come to be. It's not like it's going to happen. Not it's maybe may might not happen. It's going to happen. And God's waiting for the right time to do it. And that time is near. This is God's way of modern proper, proper communication for us. <clears throat> the, Torah, the Torah teaches us meals as well as mitzvahs. We must exercise sensitivity in our speech and choose our words so that they can be accepted. At the end of the, the, of the uh, parsha it says, in 43, 34, he, Joseph, had portions that had been set as before him to them. And Benjamin's portion was five times as much as the portion of any of them. They drank and became intoxic intoxicated with him. It's referring to his brothers here. And Rabbi, the Rabbi of, of, of Alexander, Yismach Yisrael, said that Joseph drank that day because he was re reunited with all his brothers. But the brothers drink for a different reason. The brothers drink because they overcame their evil. Their sin. It says, the Yismach Israel says that they realized how destructive it was to be envious after they saw Joseph. They determined to extirp extirpate this trait from the character. However, they no way succeeding, knowing if they succeeded in this. 
by the fact that when Benjamin had given the extra portions and they were not jealous, they knew that they over overcame their their sin, their evil. And the trait was gone from them. They had overcome the trait of evil. So they rejoiced. Brought down a time that when we study, when we finish a Mesecta, we finish a tractate of Talmud or the Torah or something, we party, we celebrate, we drink wine, we have a celebration to do that. Same thing with overcoming a bad trait. When someone overcomes a bad trait, you should celebrate it. When you know that right then and there you've overcome a bad trait, celebrate. Dance, drink, go out and have fun. You've done something that's incredibly hard to do. We learn from this a few things. It's Prasha. How to proper speech. The Midos. We learn about how to, what overcoming an evil trait, a bad trait. All this we learn is one Parsha. It's so simple. The sins of life are there for us. And also how to over separate evil from good. And how to overcome the evil. This Parsha sort of rings into what's going on currently in Israel. Currently in Israel is a fire. A wild fire that is destroying land in Israel. The a the karma karma forest in Israel is being destroyed right now by fire. Haifa is being evacuated. A lot of people are being evacuated from Haifa and surrounding areas. About approximately seventy people have been destroyed, have been killed. I think fifty something bodies have been found so far, including that of a bus of prison guards who are on the way to evacuate a prison of its prisoners, probably most of who were terrorists. What we learn from this is that we must keep sin evil away from us as much as possible. The fire is the evil. The people of the land is the good. It's surprising to say that in this time of Hanukkah, where we celebrate that the light lasted, fire is not always a good thing. In this case, it's an evil thing. We need to pray that the people of Israel, different countries who are coming right now to help, will be able to put out this fire and save the land, the precious land that's being destroyed, the Carmel Forest. I beg of you, I ask of you that you pray for the land of Israel. Do everything in power to pray and help that it gets fixed. May you have a Shabbos where you overcome a bad trait. May we all have a Shabbos where we see, wake up at the Shabbos and we see that the fire has been put out. Let us be better selves. Have a good Shabbos, a great weekend. Happy Hanukkah. See you next week.